Hello, just an update of what I've been doing with this Tech Luck. Uh, I put a bunch of parts in. I put in these Zeners. And uh, instead of these transistor Darlington pair, I actually used a FET. Uh, this is the same thing you see in a lot of the uh, Chinese uh, modules that come in that are a universal voltage. Uh, I used the gate offset voltage. And that gets me around 13 volts. The two zeners I put in were 8.3 volt zeners. And uh, that works fine. You know, you get the voltage. Replace the uh, regulator, which had uh, gone up in smoke. And one of the things I said I was doing is I have two diodes here. These two diodes provide like a 1.3 volt offset. And... Uh, this pin is offset at about 1.5 volts and so that allows the whole system to work replace this transistor and these two as a driver and also have the FET there and uh, a little 10k resistor just to provide some pull down for the transistor so it's not floating and I've added to the schematic these uh, three capacitors these are the capacitor banks they're 100 microfarads at 400 volts and there's three of them in parallel. That's these right here. It's a very, sm very small amount of capacitance but uh, this thing is screaming at uh, 63 microseconds and they have a 1.6 microsecond off time and supposedly that's enough to quench the arc. Uh, you know I have Flixdexia and uh, I had the plus and minus reverse on this. Uh, this 5600 ohm went to common and 150K went up to the current sense resistor. Uh, I tried uh, powering this up and uh, it, you know, you could see it working. You could see it trying to hunt around for a, uh, you know, power point voltage, but it could never find it. It would just keep cycling and cycling and uh, so I pulled it up here to do some more analysis. I thought possibly this uh, LM358 uh, was uh, damaged from voltage. Uh, on the other schematic, I had this connected to 12 volts. It actually is the 5 volts. I was thinking about that last night, and I thought about how dangerous that would be to have the uh, capability of outputting 12 volts into the microprocessor. And yeah, it's 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 connected to five volts. These schematics are just quick. It takes me a while to correct everything. But uh, what I did was I broke the connection between this op amp and pin 16. Pin 16 is an A to D current input for the current sense. And I was always seeing right here about uh, seven tenths of a volt. And from the small gain of this op amp. You wouldn't get that much voltage, so I thought maybe the op amp was bad. Uh, so I, I disconnected it from the input pin, and this input pin floats up to uh, 0.77 volts. Actually, it, it's up higher and it, it bounces around with a lot of noise. But just putting a 720 ohm resistor on it, which would drag down anything, uh, it's still 0.77 volts. So this was the microprocessor was outputting current into the op amp and uh, this is about the maximum current that the op amp could put out it could only correct it up to uh, 0.77 volts uh, and then I looked at uh, pin 17 pin 17 is the voltage divider off the uh, capacitor bank uh, for my test you know typically this thing would be running around 120 volts and I want to be fair and so I bridged another 470k around here, so it would work good with my 60 volt array. But uh, I checked on this, and again, I'm getting around 1.5 volts, which is much higher than you would expect. And uh, well, it was 1.5 volts with uh, 15 volts input. Uh, I was doing some testing. No need to put in a lot of voltage, and. Uh, Again, it was, you know, bouncing around a lot, and I put the uh, 720 ohm resistor in parallel with this to drag it down, 
and it would still only drop down to 7.82 volts. So all your A to D inputs are shot. And like I, uh, if you look at this LED, it never fully turns off, but it had a nice distinct flash before. And if I can get my glasses here, if I short out that pin number one to the micro, then you get this nice distinct flash again. And if you move it, it's back to a little bit on, a little bit off. So the microprocessor is shot. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with this. I mean, if it's true that you can't get this chip, you know, maybe the guy who owns this because he's registered can get it. They're certainly not going to send it to me. But uh, one of the things I'm, I'm playing with is that I can go to one of these little boards. This is a TL494 board. I kind of like this board, and, you know, the TL494 is really kind of a nice chip. It's too bad it's so old because it has such a low voltage lockout that it's really kind of dangerous to use on FETs if uh, you're bringing up your panel voltage slowly. But uh, I can set this to a fixed frequency with uh, a set off voltage in the uh, duty cycle and uh, you know I could use the existing capacitors put a FET in here and this would be the whole thing as far as electronics, I'm just using the power supply to produce that 13 volts. And uh, we set the thing up for a constant voltage. And uh, that'll get you some heat, you know. It's not great, but it gets you 95% uh, of the way there. So that's what I'm doing right now. Doing a lot of thinking about what I want to do. Uh, I've worked on this so much that I'm getting kind of really tired of it. <laughs> there's like no end in sight of all the little problems but that's the way it goes so yeah put all those components in did a lot of work and uh, kind of all for nothing but it's interesting I learned something I uh, hope you have too